All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name is Aaron. They say that if you own just 0.28 Bitcoin, you're statistically guaranteed to be in the richest 1% of the global population in Bitcoin terms. Now today, 0.28 Bitcoin equals just above $3,000. Now, who are they? How can we say this with such certainty, a statistical guarantee? And why does this apply to Bitcoin? Let's talk about that. Now, before we get into an article that I like to share every so often, it's called Bitcoin Obsoletes All Other Money. I want to read you a part titled All Roads Converge on Bitcoin. The great constant is finite scarcity. Before we get into this, talking about what makes Bitcoin special and why this is actually accurate, let me help illustrate this by talking about a DeFi altcoin that recently went to actually $30,000. It's called YFI. It's urine finance. It's not decentralized. It's not immutable. It's not permissionless like Bitcoin, but it is scarce as hell. So why you wouldn't say YFI is a store of value because you know who knows where it'll be in a year, let alone 10 years. It, it changes often. It can be changed. Bitcoin is something different, but it does have that scarcity. And to even go further with this, let's take a look at what Parker Lewis says in Bitcoin Obsoletes All Other Money. Bitcoin is becoming the scarcest form of money that has ever existed. Finite scarcity is a property that no other form of money has ever or will ever achieve, and demand for Bitcoin is fundamentally driven by that scarcity. However, scarcity is a two-sided equation. A fixed supply may be the primary draw, but demand is a critical and often overlooked aspect of that scarcity. Demand is what actually makes scarcity a utility as a constant in exchange. Bitcoin becomes more and more scarce as a two-way function of increasing demand and a completely inelastic terminal supply. Bitcoin supply is inelastic. It is fixed. It is capped. And its network effect is so big and it's, it's been around for so long, nothing can ever change that at this point. Unlike a token like YFI, which is new and can be changed, not the same thing. To continue, Bitcoin becomes more and more scarce as a two-way function of increasing demand in a completely inelastic terminal supply. The scarcity of its fixed supply creates demand, but increasing demand then creates greater scarcity. If this sounds circular, it's because it is. If there were 21 million Bitcoin, but only I valued it, then there'd be nothing scarce or useful about Bitcoin. But if myself and 100 million people valued Bitcoin, by the way, about 100 million people value Bitcoin today, 21 million starts to become more scarce. And if the network continues to grow, maybe to 1 billion, 21 million would become extremely scarce and Bitcoin would represent a greater utility as a constant. Let's talk about that. This is a projection of supply versus demand regarding Bitcoin, adoption versus Bitcoin in circulation. Now, this is us today. There are 18.6 million Bitcoin in circulation, and this is the estimated adoption for 2020. Now, in 10 years from now, by 2030, we know for a fact there's only going to be 20.6 million Bitcoin in circulation. Yet, adoption will exponentially grow, I'm sure. You don't think 1 billion people are going to buy Bitcoin at some point? Well, let's talk about the average Bitcoin that a user can actually buy. I don't know if you know this, but as of 2020, the average holding, I'm talking about the average, is just 0.2 Bitcoin per person. By 2030, it's going to be 0.02 for the average holding. And it's because of that metric right there why we can statistically guarantee that if you own 0.28 Bitcoin, you're going to be in the richest 1% of the world in terms of Bitcoin. Now, I've said this before. I think that Bitcoin has decades of upside ahead of it, not just years, decades. I think it's a decade-long experiment, and it's hard to imagine that now because Bitcoin's only been around one decade, but it's going to get easier. Just like 1995, half the people didn't think the internet would be a part of their lives forever. Cut to 10 years later, 2005, everybody believed Bitcoin would be around. Let's go further. No more than 5 to 10 million people will ever even own a full Bitcoin. Between whales and hodlers and nations and institutions, there won't be many left to go around. 
Factor in the lost coins. Factor in the fact that a lot of people already own more than one Bitcoin. There's even less. Whole coiners will be rare indeed. So in the future, if you own 0.28 Bitcoin, you know, nobody knows the future, but you could be considered statistically the richest 1% of the world. Now imagine in the future, if you're a whole coiner, by the way, people are realizing the implications of getting a piece of the Bitcoin pie, you know, all one must do to realize this because everything is on a blockchain that can be checked at any time. All you need to do is follow the money. The number of wallets holding 1000 Bitcoin or more has reached a new all time high. This recent uptick shows the demand is there. This is exactly what I would expect to see if Bitcoin has a future. And by the way, I was saying that since down here, since down here, since down here. And we've been talking about Bitcoin for almost three years now. We've been talking about Bitcoin when it was here, when it was here, when it was here, when it was here. And the fact is, Bitcoin is sitting right under some of the last remaining resistance is this white line right here. We already broke above some resistance, but once we can break above and retest the last remaining resistance, I see no reason why it's not logical to think that we're going to see something similar to what we've seen in every other bull run. This is just the last bull run where once Bitcoin breaks all time highs, that's when stuff really ramps up. And if you would have accumulated any time at this point, even right after Bitcoin broke all time highs, it never went that low again. So are you a Bitcoin bull like me? Do you think your Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is going to be worth a lot of money someday? Treat it as such. Guys, make sure you're storing and protecting your coins. There are plenty of ways to do it. I'm going to leave a link so you can check out Ledger Nano X and Ledger Nano X. And this is what you should do. Go on over to Ledger's website, go to products, go to compare our devices, and then it's going to give you a breakdown of what the Ledger Nano S is and what the Ledger Nano X is. I've tried all sorts of wallet. I've tried both of these out. With the Ledger Nano X, you can only store like three or four cryptocurrency wallets on it at once. So you're going to have to keep switching out the wallets if you have, if you have more than one coin or get some more wallets. If you're only holding Bitcoin or Bitcoin and Ethereum, maybe this is perfect for you. If you're holding a lot of other coins and you want this to be connected to your phone, but still safe, maybe the Ledger Nano X is for you. You can seek out this tweet, check it out for yourself, or I'm going to leave it as a pinned comment as well. I recommend either of these. Channel announcement, my friends. We will be hosting Alex Saunders of Nuggets News for an interview this week. Topics include, but are not limited to, Bitcoin, Ethereum, DeFi, and specifically, because he has a whole team of researchers and he uh, you know, does this for a living, he's going to share with us how he researches projects specifically looking for not fast growth, but a little more slower growth, 100x coins. That's what we're going to be talking to him about. Also, decentralized gaming and decentralized webs. If you have a question for him, comment below. I'm already seeing some good questions. What's your recent thoughts on RDN? Please, guys, got in again some weeks ago through Alex. Fire. I'd like to hear his current thoughts on the future of blockchain gaming. Yeah, Alex has just started talking about that more recently. You know, we're talking about, you know, I really, I want to pick his brain on, you know, Ethereum. I, I, I'm familiar with the Bitcoin maximalist's view of Ethereum. I'm, I'm familiar with the flaws that people say Ethereum has. You know, I want him to continue educating on, you know, what is the, 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 the use case of Ethereum? Do you see Ethereum doing well in this cycle and many cycles? What are your thoughts on DeFi and the current bubble? We have tons of stuff to talk to him about. It's not going to be live streamed. We're going to record it, but it will be released sometime this coming week. Let's get to some recent news. Ethereum Classic has suffered its third 51% attack this month. This one reorganized over 7,000 blocks, nearly double the severity of the first two attacks. And the reason this happens is because Ethereum Classic is proof of work. And if you don't have miners mining proof of work, if the hash rate isn't going up, like Bitcoin this continually goes up, it's at all time highs. If, if you're not Bitcoin and your hash rate is low, then you are susceptible to the blockchain being changed and you know a 51% attack and this happens to ethereum classic all the time it's just it's interesting we're going to see every proof of work coin suffer from this at some point unless their hash rate continues to grow up go up correct all right that is it for me my friends my name is aaron at altcoin daily see you tomorrow let's go